Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Bia Williams. I'm Wendy Papazan. I'm Seychelle Van Poole. And I'm Sarah Reynolds. Hi, everyone. It's Thanksgiving week. This is my favorite holiday. Woo! Uh, Because it's family time without the stress of presents. So I love Christmas too because of the family, but you have all the stress around giving. Uh, Thanksgiving is just family time. So happy Thanksgiving. Uh, And there's one thing that I can almost guarantee that most of our listeners struggle with. And we know that because all of us struggle with it. Uh, that our family and friends are too afraid to tell us. And no, it's not every Thanksgiving you gain five pounds. I thought that's where you were going with that. I totally thought that's where you were going. I was like, my hands don't fit. Everyone will tell you. No no one will tell you that, okay? (laughs) This isn't that episode. (laughs) Yeah, it's not that. Yeah, that's That's another episode. That's after the holidays. Yeah, that's That's next week, guys. That's next week, yeah. (laughs) Exactly. But what they're not telling you is that they are noticing that you aren't present, you aren't mindful of others around you, and you're stressed and focused on other things like your business, or right now, many of us are on our phones. We have our head in our phones on social media versus being present and mindful with those are, that are closest to us. So our so friends true. and family, so true. Yes. Uh, yep. Our friends and family get the worst of us many times. That's our sad reality. That many times they get what's left over of our time and our the focus. The wrong kind of leftovers. Yes. Thanksgiving. Yes. yes. <laughs> Not the, the wrong kind ones. of leftovers. Exactly. Um, and so it's so important for us to realize that it's something that uh, all of us struggle with, being mindful and present. And as we enter into this important family week, we wanted to dive in today on how to be more mindful and present with those that we love and or mindful and present with ourselves, right? Um, and taking that time. So today we're going to dive into how. We're going to give you tips on how to be mindful and present. And the four of us struggle with this just as much as you do. So as always, you can expect us to be vulnerable. We can share our stories and our struggles with this. Uh, But let's dive in. How to be mindful and present. Yeah. And I I would just add, uh, before we really get into the meat of it today, is that uh, for me personally, during COVID, it's been even more of a struggle because... I've been working at home now for, gosh, eight months. Yep. And, and by the time Thanksgiving rolls around, I guess it'll be another month, will be nine months. And I have no division between church and state, you know, yep. no mm-hmm. division between work and home life. And so it's even harder to be, to be mindful because there's really no transition. So it true. is. And, and I keep, I keep, that's so true, Wendy. And I, and I keep hoping that it, this is going to be a destination where it's like, I can be present in all things all the time. <laughs> and it's just not that way. So, you know, I want us also to realize that this is a journey. This is not yes. a destination. You are going to be an active failure on this a lot if you're an entrepreneur and also have a big personal life. And so yep. this is something that you know I personally will be listening to probably at least once a month myself on this yes. episode. I was about to say one, that, say. Yes. Yep. <laughs> it's one that I need on the regular over here. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. I think what's ironic about us recording this this morning, and, and you guys know that, but our, our listeners don't know this, is literally you guys witnessed me so distracted. When we started Mm -hmm. this recording, I have a crisis going on at work and I was, my fingers were frantically texting. I was fielding calls. I had to start late. And, um, and I literally just now had to shut down all notifications, which I rarely do in order to be present and mindful for this podcast. And I am stilling my, my brain right now to be here. So it's, it's kind of ironic that we're, we're having this, you know, right now, but I'm in the middle of it. I'm in the middle of a crisis management and as a leader, that is very distracting, right? And yeah. so I just think that's kind of funny, like I'm battling it as we speak. Can I have one other admission too? We had um, our Amplify event not too long ago, our virtual one. And something that we as the dolls talked about was how you can get addicted to busyness. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that was like, I was actually a personal admission on my side, right? That I, I was like, I really think I'm addicted to being busy. I get dopamine from it. I get yep. um, a huge hit of like success and checking something off. And like being busy for me is, re- it's very rewarding. And I think being mindful and still has its own rewards when you're willing to work at it, right? And um, it's far easier for me to lean into the busy and the business than it is to lean into the mindful, the present, and the personal. So, so true. that's yeah. definitely a, a 
an admission on my side. Yeah, 100%, and, it's, and, and, and it's more of a struggle than ever before. You know, we yes. don't have any, you know, it used to be if we went to the post office and we had to wait in line, right? Yes. You know, before we had, before yeah. we had cell phones, yes. you'd have to either talk to the person behind you in line or kind of stare off in space and, yep. and just think. And mm-hmm. so a lot of us don't have any time during the day for thinking. And that's really mm-hmm. part of, part of the, the mindfulness journey. And the yeah. majority of it was co- driving time. So mm-hmm. for many of us, especially right. I'm in the DC Metro, one of the top worst traffic areas mm-hmm. in the country. Yeah. And the benefit of that is I had a lot of time in the car and sometimes I would shut everything off and have silence and be present and be mindful with my thoughts. And all of that gets eliminated with everything that's going on right now. Um, and so let's go over how to be present. So the first thing is you want to practice mindfulness. You want to practice it. And how we recommend doing that is have time block time in your schedule to make sure that you're being mindful and sort of set up, our recommendation is to set up your day for that Mm -hmm. and have that first thing in the morning to be present and practice mindfulness. So there's a few things that you can do for me. Um, I pray, I do a lot of praying, Mm -hmm. uh, which is both like internal and of course external, uh, but prayer time for me is super important uh, in how I start off my day. And I know that I think Via, you're doing some meditation right now, Mm -hmm. right? Well, you know, and, and can I just ask yeah. what that looks like for you, Sarah? Yeah. I'm just curious because yeah. I know it's one thing to to say that you wake up and you pray, but I mean, what's the what do you actually do if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, so I have a prayer uh, journal, and I keep um, a, a bullet point of things that are going on in my life and those that I love's lives, and I put a bullet. And I go down each bullet point when I'm praying, but then I have just like quiet prayer reflecting time uh, Mm -hmm. that I just sit and sort of like listen and think and think through, um, think through the things that are going on. And at times different things, people pop into my mind a lot of times that I want to check on and uh, all of my relationships. And then also it's just like, a lot of times it's not business related, it's personal, Mm -hmm. Uh, but just taking the time and, and, and writing things down for me is important, uh, that are important to me. And I have ones that never come off the list. And then I highlight when things are answered. And then I, am I on that? (laughs) Yes. Never (laughs) ending list. Yeah. Yeah. What bullet point is she? It's like George, Olivia, Caitlin, Lincoln, Wendy. Wendy. (laughs) Yes. Uh, But I do highlight when they're answered. And then I, I actually flip through the book, flip through the journal a lot when I'm struggling of just like remembering that things get answered Mm -hmm. um, and all those uh, successes that we have uh, through life. So yeah. Yep. That's great. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no problem. I figured you had a good system around it. Yes. <laughs> I don't share. I don't know if I've ever shared that actually. Thank you, Wendy. That's for awesome. Does yeah, anybody yeah, yeah, here great. meditate? Do you guys meditate at all? Does anyone here do that? I, do I, have, I have, I view meditation as a tool in my tool belt. Mm-hmm. I don't have meditation as a practice. Uh, and I have been uh, a lot busier in my life than I, than I am now. I've had a lot less leverage and I've really needed meditation to really function at a high level. Like when I was kind of our lead listing agent and we were, I I had two ISA setting appointments for me and I was going on, you know, 10 appointments a week or whatever, five to 10 appointments a week. And that is when you really need meditation, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. to kind of like do everything. And, um, but I, I've always viewed it. I'd love to have it as a practice, but I've always viewed it as like a tool for me that I can pull out when I really need it. That's how I I'm using it, assessment. but I want it as a practice too. I tried to start it as a practice and it didn't stick for being honest, but I, I do pull it out to Wendy. I, that's how I use it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And I know you journal yeah. a lot, Bia. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that is the one thing that, that I do and I do it for a couple of reasons and, and I'm happy to share what it looks like. So um, I, I'm really into, I think being present is dumping unfinished loops in your head. And we've talked about this Mm, before. It's kind mm -hmm. of one of my philosophies that if we, you know, if we dump unfinished loops into some kind of a parking lot, uh, our brain lets go of them easier and and they Mm -hmm. don't cycle around in a loop. I think loops the best visual for that. So if I'm struggling with something, I'll write very long journal entries and, and I'll often write them as a letter to the person I'm struggling with. Or, uh, Mm. sometimes it's just to me, it depends. The other time I journal is, is, so is Wendy know, in your journal too? Wendy, you have letters to Wendy. 
You know, I was going to ask that, but she has a page. I I actually call it. If I asked that, it would, you know, it would be about my ego. I actually call it the Wendy Journal. I stayed real quiet, but thank you. Thank you for asking. I call it the Wendy Journal because it's all about Wendy. You pray for Wendy every day. I journal every day. day. No, she has but her normal I, journal and then her Wendy <laughs> journal. It's cool. Well, the other reason I journal every day, and I just think this is good for everyone to hear, is I, you know, I'm, I want to practice writing, so I want to write a book, and I believe the best mm. way to practice mm. writing is to write every day. And so yeah. I try to take so um, good. lessons I've learned and frameworks I've learned and hone and edit them, and and I've been doing this pretty consistently now for oh my goodness, three, four, five years. And so I yeah, think I'm I ready to that. write that book in a few years. Yeah, that yeah, is I'm, really cool. Yeah, preparing. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and the other thing about journaling is it allows you to uh, see patterns in your life, For sure. you know, because yeah. when, you, when you're when you writing things down and you actually take the time to go back and reflect and, and read those pages of your journal, you're like, wow, I'm kind of doing the same things over and over again. Yep. Um, and yep. so that's that's actually a part of, of mindfulness yeah. Yeah, is sure. just being aware of who you are. Yep. And that's part of uh, mm-hmm. the part of becoming, mm-hmm. you know, part of part of us all becoming more human is to be more aware of who we are mm-hmm. and, and our effect on the world. Yeah. You know, I'm actually reading a book right now. It's called Insight. And the entire book is on uh, self uh, on awareness. Mm. The whole book yes. is on internal mm. and external awareness. And it's just fascinating. I wow. Ooh. Yeah. I'm so you want to practice that. practice mindfulness. I know some people have yoga um, or so, something that in their routines. Gratitude. Yeah, yeah, gratitude. Whatever it is that you want to have something that you're blocking the time. So we prefer morning. first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when you're busy, you need to block multiple Multiple. things throughout the day uh, to make sure you just stay grounded and whatever it is in your world that does that, make sure that's in your calendar, right? Yeah. And and really quick before we move on, I want to go back to something, Sarah, that you said. Um, Don't be afraid to shut shut everything down in your car and not pressure yourself to think about a topic or your yes. next meeting. Don't be yes. afraid. And, and that some people call it white space. You can call it what you want. Don't be afraid to just drive. And, and I. this is how I define mindfulness and being present. All five senses are involved. Yep. So I do this little mm-hmm. gut check. I'm like, all right, what am I hearing? What am I seeing? Am I in the moment? Smelling. Am I smelling? Yes. And yeah. what am I, you know, whatever. Don't be afraid to just give yourself that few minutes and, and, and take away that pressure of having to think about what's coming next or what just happened. So good. And just mm. relax yeah. yourself mm-hmm. and be present yes. and mindful. Well, mm-hmm. Listen to the sounds of the freeway. You know, listen yeah. to the whatever. Yeah. I love that one, well, you know, coming coming into that, I'm going to move us to the next point, which actually is beautifully parlayed from Via on that, which is eliminate distractions, right? In order to be mindful, you have to eliminate those distractions. And so I know one thing that's helped me is by having like a chill out alarm that goes off on my phone. And it reminds me to literally like put... I have to physically go put my phone in another room that is like hard for me to get to away so that I'm not even tempted to like sneak in the corner and check it. So physically, I have to like remove myself from that sort of communication and distraction. And it's allowed me to put better boundaries around that so that I can focus more on on being intentional or breathing or present with family or whatever it is we're doing. I love that. Our biggest distraction is our phones, typically. That is what's taking us away. And so creating space between you and your phone (laughs) or you and your laptop, whatever it is that is the distraction, honestly, do it. So. And having a habit around it. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, coming home, you know, not a, not all of us come home. Some of us are home, but it's like, yeah. you know, the work day is done. I'm going to put mm-hmm. my phone up. I'm going to close yeah. my computer. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go for a walk. So like whatever your ritual is there. And I'll be honest, I don't really have a ritual r- right now, but I used to when I, yeah. when I worked at the office, which was to come home. Um, you know, back in the old days, people would come home, they'd change their clothes. Mm. Right? You know, imagine yeah. a 50s dad coming home, yeah. hanging up his fedora, taking his tie <laughs> off, hanging up his suit coat. And then it's like a real physical transition. Oh, so, I do and so, so I do that. I come yeah. home and change my clothes. Mm-hmm. It's the first thing I do. Yeah. yeah. And my martini's that. waiting held by my husband. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> With lipstick on. Yeah. I was in a fantasy world for me. Okay. <laughs> <It's not. laughs> Welcome, Welcome. Yeah. There's a great uh, Jim Let Gaffigan. Me help you with your code. <laughs> yeah. There's a great Jim Gaffigan video about this, where he's working on setting boundaries with his kids with technology. And if you haven't had the chance, you should go watch it. It's on you know YouTube or wherever you get your videos. You can but put it's it a on really, show notes. 
Yeah, yeah. It's a really funny like four minute video about him and his kids setting boundaries on technology and like what happens with that. So mm-hmm. it's really good. Yeah. And well, I you, think you should have some boundaries with your family. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't allow phones at the at the dinner table, for yeah. instance. Uh, we yeah. don't allow phones at, you know, certain times and we have certain habits where it's it's just phone free, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so whatever that looks like for your family, put those into place and enforce them because I mm-hmm. can't um you know, to me, the main time we spend together every night where, where we're all focused and present in the moment is our family dinner. Yeah. And so same, if the thought yeah, of all same. of us on our phones, then it would be sad. Yeah, yes. it would. Well, I think the other the other thing for me, and I, I love this next point, is doing an activity activity that requires focus and being present. Mm-hmm. So Wendy, you mentioned getting outside, um, but having time where you're uh, taking a walk, uh, do you know, uh, pl- throwing the ball with your with your child. With, you can't be on your phone when you're throwing a ball, right? And you're present with them. I think having activities for me that has been a force. Uh, Because I'm so bad, I have to like force it. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. But having a forced time that you're doing that. So get outside Mm -hmm. or even inside, having some type of activity um, that you're playing uh, playing a game together. Uh, Me and my daughter have been playing Super Nintendo Mario (laughs) World from back in the day lately. Um, So so, (laughs) it's so fun. Oh my goodness. And she's loving it, just that time with mommy. And I'm loving it too. So that's one of my favorite things of this year has been, you know, it's like the gift of. COVID or the gift of crisis. And Quinn learned to ride her bike in the middle of this. And so yeah. every morning we go on a bike ride together. And it has so been fun. so much fun getting to do that every morning. It's just our like, time where we go and do our own thing. And it's been awesome. Yeah. You know what? One what? of my favorite things that you guys do, Wendy, I love your walks with Jenny. Mm-hmm. I love seeing him on social media. I know exactly yeah. what you're doing. I love yeah. that. Do you want to tell everybody what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so actually, um, so Jenny's my best friend. She's my BFF. And we've been best friends for a long time. And um, every weekend, we uh, one of us picks each other up and we take the dog and we drive down to Lady Bird Lake. And we walk two and a half miles to Alta's Coffee Shop. Shout out to Alta's. And we sit down and we have a coffee and we chit chat and we walk another... Sometimes we run. Mostly we walk though, another mile and a half and we're out in nature and we just catch up from the week. And it's honestly a highlight for me. And, uh, you know, she's going to be out of town this weekend. And so I basically kind of blew off my team huddle this morning, let somebody else take over. And she and I went for a walk. That's how important it is to me. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. That's awesome. I love that. I don't do that every time we go to town, but. Yeah. Days, so. And if you live yeah. more in a northern area where not, it's not always uh, weather suited to go outside, um, having activities inside. I know my uh, mm-hmm. director of operations had a week where each uh, her ch- child picked a game for the family that they would play that night, that everything had to be shut down. She has teenagers, mm-hmm. and so they're all mm-hmm. on their phone too. And so everything had to be shut down, and they got to play a game as a family. Mm-hmm. And she still says that that was one of the best weeks of her life. Yeah, uh, because the entire family was present together. I love that. And then yeah. like a- asking yourself, what are your habits and your rituals that you institute at an early age with your family? You know, we've all, we've done Friday night movie night for gosh, I don't even know how that. long. You yeah. Know, every yeah. Day, so if we, 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 we have pizza. that too. Yeah, I know. I love that about you guys. Our families are kind of similar, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then the other thing that we do is we take a lot of vacations. And yeah. I know not everybody is taking a lot of vacations now, but we um, that's. That's for when most of us were very mindful and present. And that's part of the reason we love to go on vacations because it's a new world. We have to pay more attention to everything. We can't be on autopilot. And so taking vacations for us as a family has been a really great way to get present. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to be Mm -hmm. vulnerable and share with you that on the vacation note, um, I sometimes think that is the only time my family's mindful is when we're traveling. I mean, I, I don't want to say mm. that, but but I think that is 100% the most together and mindful that we all are. You know, we, we went to mm-hmm. Cannon Beach, Oregon awesome. um, over Labor Day weekend. And, you know, we drug the kids kicking and screaming every night to this big bonfire we would do on the beach. And by the second night, they were setting up. I mean, like it didn't take... The first night, they're like, eh, I want to sit in the house and, you know, be on yeah. my phone. Because we have two teenagers and a 10-year-old daughter. And um, <laughs> Basically and by the, three teenagers. Yeah. Basically yeah, three teenagers. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah. And we, you know... Four nights in a row, we had these awesome like bonfires with s'mores and I put all my 80s music on 
And it was so much fun. And I, I shared stories I've never shared with my kids about like my childhood. And, um, and we were so mindful and present because you really don't want to turn your phones on in a dark bonfire because they'll light up your face. It's really mm-hmm. obvious. So it was just great. I just wanted to emphasize that. I think sometimes even those little weekend getaways are so important yeah. to be present yeah. with each other. Yeah. Well, I've been really feeling it this year. You know, we, we take a lot of vacations. We normally, you know, the way my kid, the rhythm, the rhythm of my kid's school is they get a week off every six weeks. And so that was our vacation rhythm. And we have not done that. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't done it for nine months. And so when Jay and I went on our uh, goal setting retreat, we were like, we don't care where we go, you know? We, we just go need to go somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, anywhere. somewhere. But it's like, we, we have to get back into that rhythm because, yep. you know, for me, my son's a junior. And so I said to Jay, mm-hmm. I'm like, what, we're just the last two years we're together. We're just going to mm-hmm. not do that. You know, we're not yeah. going to be mindful and present, you know, yeah. about these weeks. So yep. Right. So having an activity is so important, whatever that is, right? Is, is inserting an activity as uh, something that you do every single, uh, once in a while, whenever that is, and that, that will help you be more present and, and mindful. Uh, so the next one is hey, listening Sarah, to others without thinking about there? your response. Yes. Yeah, of One course. thing in there, it's so important. Normally I wouldn't, but um, I want to talk about walks really quick because we all talked about walks and, it, and walking, yes. a lot of people walk. So here's my only comment about walks. I know them well lately. I'm doing two a day. I just want to give everybody permission to not feel like you have to have an Audible book on. You do have to have a podcast on. You are required to listen to this podcast, FYI. But after this podcast is over, <laughs> after this podcast is over, I want to give you permission to listen to music. It's only an hour a week. It's only an hour a week. To listen to music or listening to nothing at all and be be mindful with your thoughts. I put a lot of pressure on myself on those walks to get through my Audible books. I really do. I listen to them at 1.4 speed. Mm-hmm. I read and, and listen to a lot of books. And, and sometimes I just have to give myself permission to um, not do mm-hmm. anything at all. So I, just, I had to throw that in there because I feel like so many people go on walks. Yeah. Yeah. That's Same one with of driving. my favorite ways. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I've missed the drive home because of the just being able to process. That's when my chill out alarm would go off and I'd like yeah. send myself out and drive and just be. So I've had yeah. to like go physically out and like take walks around the block instead to kind of like re-anchor walking back into the house. Yeah, no, so true. Yeah. So true. So yeah, so listen, listening to someone without thinking about your next response now this that's tricky. <laughs> uh, we we actually practice this weekly on the podcast because when we're recording, a lot of times we are thinking about what what we're mm-hmm. going to say next. And then when we listen to our own podcast, many times we'll get text messages from each other. You're so smart! Oh my goodness, that point! Like we totally missed the point that that yeah. person was mm-hmm. making because we were thinking about the next thing versus being present and mindful with the pe- people that we were in. So and that's common, right? That's a common mm-hmm. thing. Um, it's just being making sure that we're listening uh, to someone versus thinking about the next thing uh, that you have to say. So, so good. Okay, I do. So I feel like I'm like the walking book review person, but I have been reading a lot lately. And my next book on my nightstand is a book that came highly recommended called "You're Not Listening" by Kate Murphy, mm. and the whole book is about listening and what to do and how to do it. What was so it I'll called? give you a report. It's called "You're Not Listening" by Kate Murphy. That was and, a joke. And, <laughs> that's, that I did not even get it. I was it was a good about joke. The next thing I was going to say. You too. <laughs> oh, that was a good one, Wendy. You were so good. Sorry, that was a dad joke. <laughs> that was a dad, was a dad that was joke. Like a, that's like a dad joke. I feel like that was a dad joke. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god! All right, you goofball. All right. Yeah. Well, the other way that that we can be present. <clears throat> is to really is really to to learn something new, right? Mm-hmm. To free your mind up. So many of us just are constantly in the grind and we're just going and thinking and doing and it can be very freeing. It can be very freeing to do new things. Like even studies show um if you take a different way to work, right? Mm-hmm. Or a different way to, to church or a different way to your favorite restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually um, it helps you be more present. You're more creative. And then you're not just on autopilot. I mean, you guys have all had that feeling where you get in your car, right? You're leaving the office. You have so much on your mind and you get into your driveway and you're like, whoa. How did I get how here? How did I get here? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. How did I get here? 
Yeah. I have this whole, I don't know about you guys, but like, do you have this like list that rummages around in your head of like, when I retire one day, I'm going to do X or when I have more time someday, I'll learn how to do X. And one thing I had on my list for a long time was I, I'd love to like work with my hands and do tactile things. And like, I've sewn, like, I like, I like to sew and make things. Like, I like to see something become concrete. And so I was like, when I'm, when I retire, I'm going to knit. And uh, <laughs> Tiffany Fikes and our group um, of dolls taught me on one of our retreats last year how to knit. And so that's one of the things that I've added for mindfulness is because physically you have to use two hands, you can't do anything else. Um, and so, uh, just just that that like being present and you know just kind of as Quinn and I can have a conversation or something. I you know am I'm learning something new. It's been a yes. really really neat little thing of that was on my someday list that I was able to move to a why not now list. So if you have yeah. something like that, move move it to now. You don't have to wait. Do it now. That's so true. But whatever it is to free your mind. So doing mm-hmm. something new. Uh, Via talked about earlier closing the loop on something. So yeah. writing it down, uh, sending an email that you need to send to yourself maybe to just like free your mind. Like whatever's yeah. in there, get it out. Get it out of your mind. Yeah. And it's really, I think it's really important to have a hobby or something. A lot of extreme people have extreme sport hobbies because it mm-hmm. keeps them mindful. It's essentially mindfulness practice, rock climbing, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think of other ones because you have to physically be there in the moment. You can't mm-hmm. concentrate on anything else. So woodworking, painting, mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. That, that you have to be mindful. It's really like, I'm a piano player and I'm um, starting up the piano again because mm-hmm. I, I can't really focus on a lot when I'm, Wendy, to your point, when I'm, I'm relearning a skill that it, that's dormant, mm-hmm. yeah. I can't focus on a lot of things. I'm focused on the notes, my fingering. And, and I just wanted to mm-hmm. emphasize that, that. that having... Um, thanks, I haven't shared that yet. Um, that's but cool. having having something, cool. a, a hobby of some sort is so important for this. Well, guys, I don't know about you, but um, I've learned a lot today. Hopefully, you guys could uh, be present and mindful when listening to this podcast today. And um, we learned we learned a lot. We learned a lot about um, being present, turning our phones off, um, doing new things, remembering to travel even in the time of COVID. And so, I just would wish this for everyone, which is mm-hmm. to take this week with your family. Hoping, hopefully, you're taking some time off. We probably all need it. Yes. Um, to to be there for Thanksgiving, whatever your family looks like, to be completely present in the moment. Understand that every second, every moment that you have with the most precious people in your life, you're never going to get those back, right? Yep. There's nothing more important than yep. the relationship with the most special people in your family. So be present. I know we're, uh, I speak for everyone when I say we're all really uh, thankful yes. for all of our listeners. It's been a yes. really fun journey for all of us and uh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy yeah. Thanksgiving, happy guys. Thanksgiving, Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for listening to Empire Building. If you like what you heard, join our tribe by subscribing to your favorite podcast platform. And please help us spread the word by leaving a five-star rating and review. Until next time, wishing you a life worth living. And remember, you are an empire builder.